Say all the books. There's a, quite a number of books that were added to, and even some parts added to existing books. But in the book of Sirach, which is an addition that they made, it says alms given makes atonement for sins. It's in Sirach 3:30. So, in other words, you can pay to get your sins forgiven. You don't have to go to the priest just to pay. Right. And in the book of Tobit, it said the same thing: alms deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. So they're saying that you can pay to get rid of your sin. Now, it's your sale. And this, this was the teaching of the Catholic Church, but at the Council of Trent, it became the official teaching, and they, they made it part of Scripture. So they, that's the doctrine? They, they added to the Word. Okay? And Mark mentioned Maccabees. Now, Maccabees, there's two books of Maccabees, First and Second Maccabees, which were kind of a history of the, of, of the war in Turkey. We call them intertestamental war, right? And in the book of Maccabees, in the second book of Maccabees, soldiers took up an offering. Now, after a battle, they took up an offering to provide for a, a, a ex, for a sacrifice for their dead comrades, okay? To take away their sin. And this is a quote. They prayed and made atonement for the dead that they may be absolved from their sin. So they're doing things to try and get sins removed from people who have already died. That's in 2 Maccabees chapter 12. Now that's just a few minor examples of the Roman Catholic Church adding to God's word to justify their unscriptural practices. Am I upset now? Testing. Hey, you know, where did I learn this stuff? Well, I did graduate work in the Catholic seminary. That's where I learned most of this stuff. And then I went out and studied more and more and more. Of the word. Of the, of the word, yes. And history. History, history is, is important. Well, you know why history is very important? Because it is his story. Yes. There is no period of time when God is not active in the life, in, in human history, right? So, with those additions that they made, they did exist in, in, in Old Testament times. These books, the first and second Maccabees, I mean, Tobit, Sirach, uh, Bell and the Dragon, which they added to the book of that, these existed in Old Testament times. However, the Jews never accepted them as scripture. You gotta understand that, right? And the reason that that's important is because Paul says in Romans, in chapter 3, verse 2, that the Jews were entrusted with the oracles, the word of God. They were trusted with it, and they did not make this part of the of, of scripture. Because they, they recognize that it's not right. Now do I have to read Deuteronomy? I mentioned Deuteronomy a couple of times. Deuteronomy 4. I'm going to read verses 2 and verse 24. You shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Now that's not the only place I mentions that. It mentions it in the New Testament. It mentions it in the Old Testament. And God says, if you add to my word, all of the curses of the word are going to come upon you. So, remember, like I said before, after the death, the resurrection, and the burial of Jesus Christ, after the day of Pentecost, Paul, the most ardent voice against believing in righteousness, by the works, obtained by the works of the law, said that the law is holy and good. Okay? We had a problem here. We had a problem in as much as most churches are saying, well, the law is over and done with. That was for them. Well, but, but that is in direct contradiction to the teaching of Jesus Christ and for your information to the teaching of the Apostle Paul. All right? Is that important? It is important. It is particularly important in these perilous last days when that liar, that father of lies, the one who is a liar by nature and the father of lies, is so hard at work to deceive believers and take us from the place that God wants us to be. The Word of God is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth, and He is life. If Satan can get you away from the truth of the Word, he is getting you away 
confront the way, the truth, and the language. Okay? Paul wrote to the church in Corinth and, and, and that God, and he said that God, who also made us adequate of servants of a new con covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. We need to understand how to live in the spirit of the word in Deuteronomy, in Leviticus, in Numbers, in Exodus, in Genesis, in all the law. It's a praising spirit. Because it is. If it, if it is the word, it is Jesus. If it is prophecy, you know what? The spirit of prophecy is, I'm going to say this backwards, is the testimony of Jesus Christ. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. All right? And like I said, you can know the scripture without knowing the word. And there's a lot of that going around. The Pharisees were expert in the scripture, just like I said, and did not recognize the word in their midst. And so Jesus said, John 8, 43, why do you not understand what I'm saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten Father, Full of grace and truth. John 1, 14. Jesus did not know Deuteronomy or Leviticus. He is Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Should you take any verse and say that it is not, if not for today, it's your understanding of it is not for today. Mark said in the beginning, you know, the law, you know, the, 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 the law, no, the law is a, a a tutor to lead us to Christ. The greater your understanding of the law is and the prophets, the greater your understanding of Jesus will be. Right? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid, O oh God, in my heart. Sin against me. Deliver me from all of my sin.